This is Chris, the Idaho Painter. In this video, we're gonna talk about how to go about choosing the right paintbrush for the job you're doing. So stay tuned for this video. So the first thing you need to do is determine what you're going to be painting with. You're going to be using water-based products or oil-based products and that will help you determine the brush you're going to be using. If, only, if all you use is oil-based products, then you should probably be using a natural bristle brush. But a natural bristle brush, if you try to use it with water-based products, it's going to get flimsy really fast and not perform like it's supposed to. Now you've got brushes typically in all paint stores or hardware stores, do-it-yourself stores, that are designed for all paints and it's made the choosing a brush process a lot easier to go about because you can use them for oil-based paints and water-based paints and stains for that part. Oil-based paints and stains and water-based paints and stains and varnishes also. If you're going to be using oil-based products, these natural bristle brushes do actually perform better, give a better finish on an oil-based product than say does a natural bristle brush. It's just gonna give a smoother uh, laid out finish that just looks smoother, doesn't have as much what we call roping or brush strokes than these type of all paints brushes. But these things perform really, really well if you choose a really good quality brush. So first off, you're gonna see brushes with different handle styles. You're probably gonna wonder what the heck all these different styles are and all that has to do with is what feels comfortable in your hand. Some professional painters like a brush like this. This is the this is the type of handle, the only type of handle I like to actually hold in my hand. Some of them like this fat style, some of them like what we call a rat style and it comes up to a pointy tip and it all depends on what you like, what you prefer. So now let's talk about the brush handle itself and what it's actually made of. A cheap brush is going to use cheap wood that's actually going to fall apart fast and not last very long. This thing from on this brush is actually an alder wood and that's a very hard wood. It's not going to absorb a lot of water. It's going to stay dry and it's going to last a long time. You get into the cheaper brushes, they're not sanded and polished as well. They're not as smooth, not as comfortable in your hand. They don't have the beveled edges on them. And so it's just, if you're painting for a long time, like I'm painting all day long, you definitely want a handle that's gonna last, that's gonna be comfortable, and it's gonna help make this brush last longer. So we'll work our way down to what we call the ferrule, and that's this metal part right here. On a cheap brush, a ferrule is gonna be made out of cheap metal that's gonna rust. This thing, this is a copper band, and the brushes I use are either copper or stainless steel and will not rust and last a long time. Now we'll get down to the bristles themselves. Cheap brushes, you can actually just pull these bristles right out. And what happens with a cheap brush, as soon as you start painting with that thing, there's nothing more annoying but the bristles will start to come out. And that definitely happens all the time with a cheap brush. So giving you a good finish, a lot of that is actually determined by the bristles themselves. And if you look at the bristles, I'll take this brush and I'm just gonna look right down the bristles right here and they have a really nice taper to them. If I take a cheap brush, I'm gonna look down a cheap brush, and, and it's not gonna have a taper. A lot of times they're actually just cut flat. This one has a really nice taper to it and then the brushes or the bristles are all even. So when I take and lay that, that brush out to do a cut in, it more, is more likely to give me a nice straight cut in versus a brush that has a bunch of jagged edges or is actually not, <clears throat> doesn't have a really good taper to it. So now I'm looking at this brush here and we got the bristles. There's all different kinds and makeups of bristles when it comes to the brushes. There's the natural bristle brushes and then there's these nylon polyester blend brushes that has all kinds of fancy names for these filaments that are in here. And this one's a combination. This one actually has three different filament types in there. And those filaments are gonna add stiffness to the brush and or the lack of stiffness and make it soft so it actually will give you a smoother finish. St um, stiff is gonna be good for doing cut ends. I like an actual stiff brush. I want this thing to be really stiff so I can actually get really, really straight lines. But sometimes there's that trade off between a stiff brush will give you a straight line but won't give you a good finish or a smooth finish like a softer bristle brush does. But I use this brush right here and this is an all, all paints brush. You can use it for oil-based paints and stains, but it does really well cutting in 
and it also lays out and gives you a good finish. So another thing I'm gonna be looking at, so I, first I'm gonna look at this brush, make sure it's got a nice good taper. I'm gonna look at the, the filaments on these things and I can look at these and this brush actually gives me really good cut-ins and sharp cut-ins and one of the reasons why is when I look at these filaments, they're actually really sharp and pointy. When you look at a filament on a really cheap brush, the companies that make the cheap brushes are just gonna cut that bristle off flat. It's gonna be blunt and it's not gonna be ground to a nice fine point. And these bristles all bunched up together and all sharpened will actually give you a really good straight cut in line. And there's a brush, I have a brush, it's called a clear cut brush right here. And these bristles, when I'm looking at them, all of them are actually sharpened to a point. If I look at this brush right here, these bristles have what we call, they're flagged, and I'll look at them, and they're actually split on the end and not ground to a fine point. That flagging gives this brush the ability to hold more paint and go farther, but there's no way this thing will actually cut a really straight line. So there's kind of a trade-off, but there's a difference between flagging and sharp bristle brushes. Flagging gives the ability for the brush to hold more paint and go farther, and some of the uh, bristles that are really durable, made out of filaments that are durable, they flag them for on the exterior use, so you can extend your paint farther, go farther, and you don't have to dip as much, but those bristles are more durable. But those brushes are nearly as good for doing an interior cut-in. So here's something that's overlooked a lot when it comes to choosing a good quality brush, and that is with a good quality, high, a good high quality bristle, they actually clean a lot easier and a lot faster and a lot more thorough. So, so one question I get a lot is what paintbrush is my favorite paintbrush and what manufacturer do I like the best? And it's a really difficult question to answer because uh, it all is determined by what you have available to you. In my region here, I don't have access to all the paintbrushes out there that are actually really good paintbrushes. I know uh, Purdy manufactures really good brushes, Corona manufactures good brushes, and so does Wooster, and there's some other ones out there that other professional painters like and prefer, and they all manufacture really good brushes. I do actually like, the two brushes I like the most is the Purdy Clear Cut, uh, brush and the, per the Purdy XL Glide brush and those are you know two of my favorites I don't get paid by Purdy I've never been given a, a dime from them to say that I like the brushes or that they're the best it's just uh, it's one of the best brushes I have access to I've over the years come to like them and enjoy them and they perform really well for me so I do get questions every now and then um, from people what if I use an oil-based paint brush in water or what if I use say a nylon brush that's designed for latex paints only and I use them in an oil based product and this is what I've noticed when you cross use those brushes for what they weren't designed to use is the bristles themselves actually go limp really fast and so if I take this this is a natural bristle brush if I take this brush and use it in a water-based paint or water-based stain when it was designed for oil this thing's gonna get really flimsy and it's not gonna hold the product very well like it is designed to and then it's just gonna get limp and it's the same if you use a nylon brush and you use it in an oil-based paint, what I've noticed is those things actually go limp also. And here's a, another thing, if you take a, a brush like this, for instance, this is actually designed for latex paints. And if you take this brush and try to use it into like a stain, an oil-based stain for like a piece of furniture, the stain is like water. That's when I dip this brush into there, it's the liquid and the, the stain itself just pours out of the brush and drips really bad. If I take this brush right here and use it for the same thing, this brush is extremely thick. It's got really uh, flagged tips. All the tips are flagged a lot. So when I dip this in to a very watery product, it's gonna hold the product a lot better without it actually pouring and dripping. So you wanna really kinda pick the right brush for the right product. So I know I'm gonna get some questions about why I use an angled sash brush versus a flat brush, and that's actually what I use. Typically, most of the brushes we have in our vehicles are this brush right here. This is a 
three inch angled sash brush. We do all of our interior and ag exterior painting with this style of brush. And the simple reason why is it gets up into corners a lot easier. So your wall is gonna come this way and then it's gonna turn a corner. With an angled sash, this tip, I can get up into that corner and start a cut in a lot easier. That's the simple reason why we use this style brush. And all the brushes we use for interior painting and exterior painting are all angled sash brush. So ultimately in the end, why choose a high quality brush? So there's three reasons why. You're gonna get straighter lines when you do cut ins. You're gonna get a smoother finish when you're actually painting on flat surfaces. And this brush is gonna last you 10 times longer than a cheap brush. So I hope you've enjoyed this video on choosing the right paintbrush for your job. If you've got a favorite paintbrush, just let us know in the comments below. Or if you've got any features you like about paintbrushes and how to go about choosing them, just please leave them in the comments below. If you haven't subscribed to my channel, please consider subscribing and please give me a thumbs up and a like if you've enjoyed this video. If you want more painting tips and tricks, you can find me on Facebook, Pinterest, Twitter, and even Instagram. And once again, uh, we'll see you on my next video. Out.